It's Tuesday, it's tea time, let's talk. Today we're talking about needles and needle sizes. I'm gonna talk about machine sewing and hand sewing and even knitting needles. So let's start with machine sewing needles. It can seem like a very confusing forest of sharp things when you go to purchase needles. They have numbers on them. The first number before the slash is how many like millimeters? I think it's diameter. And it's multiplied so that it is a whole number. So a 75 slash 11 is a 0.75 millimeter needle. And the 11 is just the old sizing number that I don't know, it was very arbitrary. I'm not gonna leave you here without some specific needle recommendations, unless I'm sewing stretchy fabrics or really, really heavy fabrics. There are only two needles that I ever use. For fine fabrics, I use a 7511. That is for silk and white linens. Anything that's super light, airy, uh, open weave sort of things. For everything else that I do, I use a 90 slash 14. Both these needle size I get from organ needles. If you're sewing stretch, you want a ballpoint needle. If you're sewing jeans, you want a denim needle. For hand sewing needles, I buy very fine, short Japanese needles. They are number nine sharps from uh, TEC. There will be a link. It's not an affiliate link. You can Google them if you do not want to support Amazon, but Whatever, I'll, I'll put a link in the description for you. The reason that I use these needles is because the smaller your needle is, the easier it will go through fabric. So people think that like for a thick fabric, you want a thick needle, but that's not true. The finer and sharper your needle is, the easier it is going to go through your fabric. It is as simple as that. Quilting needles go through most fabrics pretty well. I hear a lot of people use beading needles. The Japanese needles that I use have a pretty small eye and like normal, like standard thread goes through pretty well. But if I use the Guterman silk thread, it can, it can be a little tough. So just, just a warning for that. When you're looking at hand sewing needles there will be like sharps blunts they have their own terminology i generally just stick to sharps and i buy from the company that i trust because there are a lot of like if you look on, at needles under a microscope that are from like a cheaper company you will find that they the tips have a lot of burrs they're not as sharp as you want them to be sometimes the very tip of it is crooked the quality control can leave something to be desired. So if you are having trouble with the hand needle, it might be the quality of the hand needle that is holding you back. I use my little number nine TEC needles over and over and over again. And one package of 20 needles lasts me like five years. They do develop a little curve in them. That doesn't bother me. If that would bother you, perhaps a larger needle with a little more diameter, but it's fine for me, even my knitting needles end up crooked. Speaking of knitting needles, the sizes don't make sense. It's okay, it's not just you. They don't really make sense. Much like machine sewing needles, they have two separate numbers. One of them is a just arbitrary size number and one of them is a millimeter number. Like a US 4 is like 3.5 millimeters and there are two different size one needles, I think. It doesn't have to make sense because knitting is very forgiving. You just need to get the right gauge, which means you need to prototype, you need to swatch it, you need to make a mock-up. You're gonna get tired of hearing me say it, but I'm not gonna stop saying it. You need to prototype. With knitting, the size of your knit is going to depend on a number of factors. In one of those factors is the thickness of your knitting needle. The other factor is how tight you knit. Another factor is do you tighten your stitch in between when you make the stitch and when you make the next stitch, which tightens your stitch again. If you knit real loose, you're gonna need a smaller needle. If you knit real tight, you're gonna need a bigger needle. That's all you need to know. 
you're gonna want to aim for the gauge that your pattern says if you're not using a pattern then go crazy do what you want it's all about making yourself happy the rules are only there so that you can aim toward the bullseye of the final product that you wish to achieve if you want to ignore any of this you have my permission use a don't use a 9014 for silk chiffon don't do that i mean you can but you're gonna leave much larger holes in your silk chiffon than you really want to use the 7511 and if you're quilting use a use a 9014 just my suggestion it's not a law i'm not gonna come after you i'm not judge dread i am the law i'm not gonna come for you no one's gonna come for you and if somebody does come for you you can just tell them hey this is my journey i need to make the mistakes that i need to make in order to learn the way that i'm gonna learn because really no one can tell you to do anything that you don't want to do we can just you know give you the weight of our own experience and our own mistakes and if you want to use that that's up to you but really that's all that's all that's it I'm not gonna waste your time so thanks for watching I appreciate it I'm gonna assume you're not new to YouTube and you know what to do with all the little buttons and uh, I'm just gonna be grateful that you're here and I will see you next week <laughs>